Hi girls, welcome back. Uh, Lori at Not Forgotten Farm, another Crafty Saturday. Uh, I have today with me our friends Brenda, Nancy, and Miss Jones back Hi. again with us. So we'll go around and we'll show our um, projects in works and we'll do a little show and tell for you again. And then um, I'll come back in a little bit and show you what I'm working on and uh, see what else we can dig up and talk about. So come right back. Hey, Miss Joan. Hi. I'm back. Back. A, back again, huh? I am. Glutton what, for punishment. Yep, glutton for punishment <laughs> is right. What are you working on this week? Well, instead of that long sampler, I'm doing this very simple one mm -hmm. called Simply Hearts by Sandra White. Okay. Get a little bit closer so that the girls can see. Girls, guys, our viewers. Very yeah, nice. It's very simple to do. Yeah. It goes fast. Yeah, that's good. So that's what I'm working on. And you you think you might want to frame that after you're finished? I or how do you I'm think? Gonna, I don't know if I'm going to frame it or make a pillow. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens at the end. You do have a lot of antique frames and things oh, like I that, you said, right? I have lots and lots of them. Yeah, Thank I'm you. sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on the table next to Miss Joan is her big honk and sewing basket. And if you're a regular reader of the blog, um, there's a couple of my postings that show me um, changing a, a big sewing box that oh, I had. Right. And I painted right. it orange. So Joan found this one at our Joann's, I believe, right? Right. And yeah. she went ahead and she altered hers. So I'm going to come in a little closer. You can open it up. Well, let's do the top first. Yeah. The top has what on there? It's a needlepoint cat. It's an it's an antique, of course. Yeah, it's an oldie. It's an oldie. And I put a jumbo rickrack around it to finish the edges. Mm -hmm. And did you, you stitch that on, right? I glued it on. Did you Don't glue it tell on? Anybody. Don't tell anybody. Uh oh. And she, I thought this was very clever. She wrapped the handle of this to make it more comfortable. And of course, she loves red. Red is one of her favorite colors. And it's homespun. And it's homespun, home yeah. And so the, the basket is denim, of course, which is another thing she loves. Yeah. So she prettied it up by putting all this accoutrement on the inside. She's got all kinds of goodies. There's her initial um, little punch needle that she did from a class that I had taught. And she's got a little thread cutter in there. She's got all kinds of goodies, yeah. She's, she's one of these ones that likes um, notions. I don't use any of these, I just collect them. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I don't use any of these, I just collect them. Liar. Well, you do use them. Well, What's well, underneath I, that tray? Anything underneath, good? Underneath, I'm sure. Yeah. And things. Well, yeah. You could oh, hold up your little nebby needle um, pins, please. All right. So hold them up. So our friend Bonnie Woomer, who has the nebby needle, and I'll put a link at the end of the video for us, she makes these fabulous little hand-dyed pins. Um, the pin heads are just dyed, and they're just, they are they look so old. They're very sweet. They so, are. Yeah, good. I love thank, them. Thank you for that. And you got all kinds of little, what is little, that, a little book? Yeah, a little notebook. A little notebook. Did you make the cover? No. Oh. No. Can't all right. say that I did. That's okay. And she's got all her little duchess hoops. Yes. Yeah. I have to watch that you don't sneak them away yeah. from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right, well, thank you, ma'am. All right. Hi, Nance. Hi. How you doing? Good. Glad Good. to have you back. Thank you. Tell Glad us what you're here. working on. So um, I'm just kind of doing some freestyling hooking right now. I just um, finished my great big coverlet, mm -hmm. and I couldn't quite get it out of my system, so I made a little <laughs> coaster, and now I think I'm over it. And then um, I'm just, I had Autumn on the brain, so I'm doing some just little kitty cat coasters and yeah let's see what you've got around your neck that, that you've been did doing last weekend i'm all tied up here but so i'm making some real fun i got these great scissors from you thank you the witch scissors mm -hmm. and it's a wool quilly uh-huh turn it it's over. got beads look at there's the quilly and stuff like that uh-huh and also this quilly was made from the very salvage edge and if you can ever find them they're real wonky and spinny. Oh, I know what you're so talking about. So it almost about. makes like petals of the yeah. leaves. Yeah, yeah, it does. So they're the best ones to find the salvage. Excellent. But um, there's a little eyeball on yeah, here. Yeah, and she better keep her eye on that because it may go missing. <laughs> um, and then um, here's another one that I did on metal. 
And so this has a, just a little um, timer on here. And then there's a little prayer box with a teeny tiny piece of wool so that all your hooking endeavors will just be blessed. There's a little tiny egg timer on that. Yes, there is. So and that there. allows us just, what, 30 seconds of hooking time. And that's about all the patience that we get when we're here <laughs> hooking together with you. Um. Well, you know, hey. So the little coaster that you have mm -hmm. there that your big uh, mug is on. Right. You did that. Is that I a, did. What cut is that? Um, it's probably all eight cuts. I, you know... I love doing these little coasters and stuff. I feel like they're very freeing and it's also a great way to start, check out a color plan that you're not real sure of. Right, can so, you just pick it up and turn it over for us? Absolutely. There you go, so you just finished it off with some hand dyed. I finished the, this is a little bit heavy uh -huh. for hooking so you wouldn't want to do it, but it is a hand dyed wool. And what I do is I just trim as close as I can to the last row of loops, mm -hmm. and then row, um, put one bead of fray check. Oh, yes, yes, all yes, the yes, way yes, around. yes. Okay, so um, good. Mm -hmm. Let that dry, and then I'll put white armless glue on the back and then trim away the excess. Very good, very good. So, yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, dear. You're very welcome. Thank you. Uh huh. We have a new visitor with us today. This is Brenda. Hi, honey. How are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. Glad to have you here with us. You. Brenda's also hooking today. Uh, she's a friend of Nancy's, came in with Nancy. She, she's a friend of everybody's. Um, <laughs> what are you working on? I am just starting a new pattern. Mm -hmm. It's called Hedwig, and it's by Anne Bond. Oh, okay. So I love her stuff. You. Yep, you can hold that up for us. And this is the pattern. That's beautiful. And that's a big one. It's okay. Like 17 by 57. Nice. So it's like a runner. Yeah, tie. yeah. Yeah, I'll put um, Anne's link on the on the video here for everybody, so when we're done, they can go ahead and see her other fabulous designs. Okay. And are you doing a similar color planning, or are you doing? It's it's different. Um, yeah, is was it a kit? No, no. Uh, so you have cut you have cut your own wool for it. Yes. And you're yeah. doing what cut? Um, mostly, well, the outlines are four, and the most of the pattern is going to be a six cut. Oh, very nice. Wonderful. Okay, good. And you brought along a little show and tell? I did. What is this? This is a little thing of uh, like a freehand mm -hmm. that I did. It's uh, going to be a topper to a footstool that I have. Oh, wonderful. I was kind of playing around with the colors. Yeah. The, the blue greens yeah. in the background are actually the paint colors in the old stool that I have. Oh, wonderful. So you'll kind of coordinate with that. Yeah. Now that's done in a wider cut, is it? This not? is all eight. All eight. Okay. And Nancy, you're still here, and I forgot to ask you, what cut are you hooking in, dear? I am hooking in whatever cut the noodle that I pick up at the time <laughs> happens to be. And there you and go. If it's a real fine one, I'm actually doubling. Yep. It. Yep. So, absolutely. Yep. Good. Grab good, and good. go. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So, Brenda, you said you have a, a footstool that you're going to put that on. Yes. So you'll put that on by just nailing it on, or how some, do you attach? I have some little um, brass tacks okay. that I'm going to tack it in the corner. It's okay. Close to the wood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have them long enough to do that. Right. Absolutely. Well, very good. And I see here you're, you're more organized than I am by having your worms in your bags, color-coordinated. Yes. Mine are usually just in a basket, dumped. Okay. But here she has them all yes. in little zippies. And I have a mark of the colors that are going to be, they're going to be used for. Okay, so you, you mark actually where the color is going to go. Right. In the, um, in the rug itself. Right. So and what cut her are, so I won't forget. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Okay. Um, all right, well, thank you, girls. And uh, I'll be back in a little bit with uh, some things that I'm working on. And I'll be here to share just a little bit more. This is, of course, the menagerie of um, embroideries that I've been working on lately. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, um, you'll see that, you know, I've been cranking these out, as some people have said. Uh, and, yeah, I'm enjoying every last bit of it. So there's the witch that I'm working on right there. She's going in a lavender moon, and her hair's flying in the breeze. Uh, this is the moon that I stitched with the metallic threads so that you can kind of see them. And I also did um, the little black pumpkin. This is, you know, brothers from another patch kind of thing. 
um, mixture of Valdani, DMC, uh, and Weeks Dye Works. I think I might have some gentle art in there too. But yeah. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm here with my better half, my hubby, Peter. Um, I t briefly uh, talked earlier about how we store our flosses and stuff like that for cross stitch and for uh, punch needle, embroidery, whatnot. Um, Peter and I have come up with a couple different ways that, well, one in particular way that I, I like and prefer to hold my floss. So Peter saw me one day winding them by hand onto these little wooden spools that we got. And he figured that he would make me a contraption that wound my spools for me. Not only do they wind, not only does it wind the spools, but then he made the stand to put all of the spools on. Of course. And he makes these, you know, individually and they hold six, no they don't, they hold eight spools each. And um, this little gizmo is called our winder box, okay? So it has this little handle. These all can go inside here. You can fit three in there with these, these little parts. This goes on here. This is your little winder. So this goes in there. And then your spool goes on it. So here's, here's, let's just say this was a skein of floss before it was wound onto one of these bobbins. I would just take the skein, take the paper off, I would put it down inside the box. I would wind this around this little spool a couple of times and then wind. So you can see it, you know, it's just turning, going around and around and around. Uh, saves a lot of time. What I'll do is fill up a whole spool rack with like all black. If I'm doing like a background of my punch needle work, I need a lot of black at one time. So I'll put one whole thing full of black, you know, DMC. This one spool will hold one skein of floss nice, nicely. So after this is wound, which is this? Our caddy. It's a spool caddy. And he's got four rods here with tiny little spools on the end. That spool handle comes off. Pops right off. So now I can literally. Either side. Yeah, either side. I can put this on, right? Skewer them right in there. Do this, put it back on. And now when I'm punching, I can pull all of my floss colors for a pattern and, you know, put them all up on here. And this is how you punch. You sit and you punch. So those that follow us will know that, um, you know, we live on a farm, 85 acres ish. And Peter goes out to the woods, cuts the trees. We uh, cut our own poplar trees right here at Not Forgotten Farm, mm -hmm. hand-picked, of course. Mm -hmm. So we. What we, kind uh, of trees do we have on here again? We've got we poplar. We have poplar, oak, maple, cherry, loblolly, cherry, pine, beech, um, aspen, uh, Virginia pine. Mostly hardwood. Yes, a lot Which of is, nut trees. We have walnut, you know, um, but the poplar is the one that we choose to make all most of our products from. All right. Well, um, next week I think what we're going to do is I'm almost done with all of my embroidery. Well, I shouldn't say that, but I've been doing a lot of embroidery lately. But I am itching to get my hook back out, and um, the girls that have been coming for the past couple of weekends, a couple of them have been hooking and I hookers. want to get my, yeah, a lot of hookers. He loves it, being surrounded by hookers. We're always surrounded by hookers. I know, right? <laughs> so anyway, I think what I'm gonna do next weekend is show you a little bit of our um, hooking products along with, you know, having the girls come in here and showing their stuff as usual, show and tell what the projects are working on and whatnot. And thank you for visiting us on another crafty Saturday at Not Forgotten Farm. Um, share like tell people about us uh email me any suggestions or happy criticism it's not forgotten farm witch at gmail.com and we'll be seeing you bye, bye folks